Levon, it's Bob and Tony here in our Eastern Connecticut studio. It's great to speak with you again, my friend. Hi, Levon. Hey, what's going on, guys? How's everything? Hi, I'm very good. I can't complain at all. Just, uh, you know, just trying to coach a little football. There you go. <laughs> again, mm -hmm. uh, Levon, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Again, a little bit for our viewers out there. Levon, a second-round draft pick in the 92 draft. Ended up playing 11 years in the NFL, nine with the Steelers. Wow. Ended with Seattle and Philly, two-time Pro Bowler, uh, an all-decade player of the 90s in the NFL, two-time Steelers MVP, and uh, probably most important, LeVon, TNT Hall of Famer. Uh, Chris and I have had the chance to speak with LeVon various times, and uh, him and our second guest tonight, Zig Fracassi, in the Thursday Night Tailgate Hall of Fame. And again, it's an honor to speak with LeVon. Quite a once career again. to be proud of, LeVon. And, uh, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that compliment. And LeVon, uh, we, we usually start by asking our guests, uh, let's take you back to when you were uh, a, a child, LeVon. I mean, some of your heroes, maybe growing up in South Carolina, some of the teams you followed. And uh, did you have that dream of every kid, LeVon, that I'm going to be an NFL player when I grow up? You know, that's kind of funny that you said that, but, um, yeah, you know, uh, we didn't really have any teams in South Carolina or, you know, the Panthers or anything like that. So we basically either follow mostly the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Dallas Cowboys. Ah. I was a huge fan of the Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. but honestly, I had three brothers that were really good athletes. Um, they only played high school ball, but those are guys I kind of looked out looked at first as um, my sports heroes. Um, you know, I, I wanted to be like them, a little better than them. And, you know, when I was 11 years old, um, just kind of throwing the ball out of my front yard, I, I told myself that I was going to play pro football. I even said it out loud, and I really didn't tell anybody about that because I thought it was sh shoot it down. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I just kept it inside, and, um you know, I just kept getting confirmations that um, I was going to be that guy. You know, my my coach was my high school coach was the first one that told me that I can play college ball. When I went to when I went to Clemson, I had a GA that said that he thought I was going to be one of the best linebackers there. And he had to know that I wasn't really highly recruited, but um, he just saw me working. And from that point on, you know, it was always my whispering or saying something that made me, you know, just confirm to me that I could be uh, an NFL player. And, you know, load the ball, uh, you know, it happened. And I went on to have a really nice career, you know. Um, really satisfied what I did. Uh, we always want more. I mean, we always want a Super Bowl to get a chance to do that. But, you know, the great thing is now I'm, I'm in the NFL in a different capacity as far as the coach is concerned. And I feel like... Uh, you know, it's my duty and my passion to get these guys to that next level and and to win that Super Bowl and be a part of it. And as far as your road to getting to Clemson, LeVon, did you have any other possibilities? You say you weren't highly recruited, but uh, what landed you at Clemson? You, you know, really, honestly, um, South Carolina was the first team to recruit me. Mm -hmm. um, Clemson came aboard probably like a week or two after that. And um, I really contributed Miles Aldridge from really doing his homework and him seeing beyond what, where I was. I, I think most people would have said small school, um, nobody's really ever came out of that region before. We don't know what to expect. But he saw, you know, he saw athlete. He saw a guy that he thought could really play. He never promised me anything, but he kept recruiting me. He kept he recruited me pretty hard. South Carolina was kinda of hot and cold as far as recruiting me is concerned. And so when I went to Clemson I just kinda of fell in love with the atmosphere. I knew uh it was a place for me and I trusted my gut uh, for that decision and it worked out very well for me. Again, uh, we're on the phone with former linebacker LeVon Kirkland. Tony, questions? LeVon, it's a pleasure to have you this evening. Thanks so much. You were you. you. were uh, extremely fast for a big man. Uh, did this just come? Was this a gift? Did you work on your speed as you went along? Uh, you know, I always say that you uh, it's about the work 
and I, I worked pretty hard, but uh, I was always pretty naturally quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say I was really that fast. I was more quick than fast. And, you know, I did a lot of jump rope, actually. Ah, <laughs> it kind of kept me nimble. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think also, and I would really tell, um, you know, young athletes that, that are going to high school who are trying to just play one sport. I thought playing multiple sports, you know, uh, playing basketball, um, also running track, really helped me become a better athlete, too. I see. So uh, I, I contributed to just, you know, a bunch of hard work and, also playing different sports and, um, you know, just working at it. I think the more you work at it, uh, and if God bless you with some, some decent athletic ability, you can cultivate that to whatever you want to cultivate that to. And, Levon, Chris and I on Thursday Night Tailgate often have talked to you about it in the past and all other guests. We always talk, and you had just brought it up, about – Guys like yourself, having played other sports, you must mm-hmm. be an advocate of one of those multi-sport um, participants as opposed to somebody who just wants to play baseball, just wants to play football. Is that correct? I, I would say so. I mean, everybody is different, and mm-hmm. I get that. But, you know, um, I, I just think it helps you out in every other sport. And what it does is it gives you experience in how to compete in a different way. Right. You know, mm-hmm. um, being able to play man-to-man is going to help you be able to play man-to-man in football. Being able to go around picks and annoy angles, mm-hmm. you know, that's you know that's a football lesson that you learn that you can apply to football. Track is just something that's going to build up your endurance and help you run better. If you're taught by a good, uh, a good coach, it's going to help you uh, be able to be more fluent um, in basketball and in football. So you can see how it intervenes. Um, you know, I don't go against a parent who wants to do that, but mm-hmm. I think as an athlete, if, when you get to the college level, you're going to probably most likely 99% play one sport <laughs> or you're going to yeah. play one side of the ball, you know, in football. So why not take advantage of it? it it's a lot of fun to play multiple sports. And uh, I think it keeps you busy, you know. I don't think you really waste a lot of time. And it just develops you as an athlete. So I will always encourage, you know, young athletes to play multiple sports. But I think, you know, we hear about Tiger Woods and maybe Serena Williams. And, you know, we profile them working on that one sport um, and how they were successful. I think most parents say, hey, let's, you know, let's pick the one sport and, uh, let's just do that one sport, but I, I think it could be overkill. I think you need a little variety, especially in baseball. You see a lot of young baseball uh, pitchers or kids, they just ruin their arm mm-hmm. <laughs> when they get to college. So, I mean, I think you may need to throw a football or something every once in a while to kind of get away from that overtraining. And that's what you can probably do. You could probably overtrain your body. All great points. And, LeVon, take us back to that draft day in 1992. Uh, your expectations that day and uh, what was your uh, contact with Pittsburgh like and uh, the reaction when you're selected by a legendary franchise? Well, you know, um, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, I, I do get interest from other teams, but I was more of a cleaner. Um, you know, I played outside linebacker uh, my whole career at Clemson. Mm-hmm. And more, you know, teams were looking at me as either outside linebacker or inside linebacker. Mm-hmm. Um, Pittsburgh was the team that really pursued me the hardest. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was one of my business, along well, with maybe Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys. Um, and they, you know, they saw a guy who could probably adjust to the inside linebacker position. And, um, you know, that's the team I wanted to go to. And it was kind of funny that that draft day, um, you know, I, I had a feeling that I might not go the first round. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was a first round talent, but I, I, for some reason, I didn't think I was going the first round. But this is always a lesson. I, I went, you know, before Pittsburgh picked me in the, for the 38th pick, I actually went to the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I was just like, they're going to pick me. They're going to pick me. They're going to pick me. Um, as I said, those, <laughs> the affirmation, I went into the kitchen and I sat by the phone. And and the phone rang. 
and it was the Pittsburgh Steelers. And um, you know, at first they said they were considering picking me, and I'm like, oh, what does that mean? <laughs> and then, um, you know, uh, Charles Bailey got on the phone. He told me that uh, I was going to be there at the next election and um, told me to welcome to the Black and Gold. That is incredible. That is <laughs> That's incredible. That's great. And as we continue talking to LeVon, we have collages of pictures on the TV screen from different parts of his career. Tony. And LeVon, as far as the college game and the pro game, what in your mind was the biggest difference? Uh, and what type of adjustments did you have to make in order to play pro as opposed to college? Well, you know, I, I think the, the, the speed of the game was the the most glaring thing that you you go from from high school to college, then from college to pro. Uh, the thing about the NFL, you know, is the top one percent guys that uh, that ever played football that's going to be on that level in the world, and, every, and, and everybody's going to be good. And um, you have to adjust to that speed. So. Um, when you get out there, you know, it's, it's going by you so fast. And you're trying to do everything right. You know, you want to make sure that you're doing your assignment right. But what I, uh, when I became in my second year, uh, I just, you know, I told myself just um, to attack, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know. Uh, my best my best strategy was to hit them before they hit me, you know, to be aggressive and to always uh take it to the neck take it to the guy so he he would know that you know that i was going to always come hard that i was always going to be physical and that was going to be uh mm-hmm. uh every down thing and i think a lot of times you can wear on people by doing that and mm-hmm. back in in those days um you can play football and you should be intimidating you can hit people just a little way or you can hit them you know, enough where they'd be like, man, I don't want to ever go through that over again. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I, you know, I just thought the speed of the game was the thing that mm-hmm. um, that was so glaring at first. And then, you know, it's the scheme of it. And then, you know, after a while, it's just like anything, you know, you do it a, a long enough time. And, you know, fortunately, you know, being with the Steelers, we kind of kept the same package, the same defense intact. So, you know, as a while, you, you you knew what you were doing. You knew the scheme and how you fit in the scheme. And then you can study the other team. And then you can really get down to studying players and who you're going against and what they do and how they do things. And, you know, as a while, the game really slows down for you. And uh, you're there before it even starts. And you just kind of know. You just have a feeling. And also, you just have a confidence that, what we call trusting your eyes and really trusting your eyes is just having confidence in what you're seeing. And I think when you get to that level, um, you really become an excellent player. So, you know, it takes time for a lot of guys. Not everybody is going to be an instant success. Um, yeah. I think there's some, some positions that kind of lead to that, like running back or defensive end. But I think other positions, it takes a little um, doing first. It takes a lot of repetition. Um, to become really, really excellent at what you're doing. So, um, you know, and, and then I became an excellent technician, you know, mm-hmm. no false step, you know, reading my keys, things of that nature. So, um, you know, that's kind of how it evolved. And I know uh, a, a, a big attributor to your success probably would be Coach Bill Cower, Levon. All nine years in Pittsburgh, you had the one head coach, and he was always – considered a defensive-minded coach, LeVon, but from what we hear, he has uh, a reputation as an overall good, good coach on both sides. Uh, what do you think were his strengths as a coach? You know, I think um, he was in touch with the players. I think um, mm-hmm. <laughs> his youth, was, his energy was definitely contagious. But I thought also, you know, uh, his experience and how he had to um, be a player to be in the NFL. And he really challenged you. Um, I, you know, when I when I played at that position, I never called signals or I never really took control of the huddle. And we had some personalities in there that with Greg Ward, Ron Woods, and Kevin Green. And 
she basically told me, <laughs> you don't have to take control of this hobble. I'm like, uh, how do you expect me to do that? And, and uh, it would, but it, what it did was it kind of brought out something more that I did, didn't really know that I had. And that's that, you know, that leadership quality. I guess that's what they saw. And he was able to pull out um, a great deal from you. You know, and I think that's what great coaches do. They they push you and they challenge you to be uh, better, you know. Um, but then also they care about you too. So uh, I just think that he had a really good relationship with uh, most of his players and his energy was contagious. And, um, you know, he, he knew what he was talking about and he definitely surrounded himself with people who knew their, what they were talking about. So, you know, Bill was a really good you know, I guess what people would call a player coach. He really seemed like he knew how to relate to the players, but he also knew how to push you. And he wasn't one of those guys that was just some soft guy. I mean, he, he worked you and he, you know, like I said, he motivated. So um, it, I was very fortunate to be, you know, in his first draft class and that he thought that the team thought enough of me to draft me in the second round. Yeah, Pittsburgh uh, almost always in double figures those first few years in wins, Tony. Question. And, uh, LeVon, you had played in a number of playoff games. You played in a Super Bowl, and sadly you didn't walk away with the prize. And I'm just curious, out of all of those games, is there one game where you think, ah, if only this happened, you know, I uh, w we would have been on the winning side? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, if you think about the Super Bowl, I, I really think that two turnovers – really hurt us it really wasn't you know anytime you throw an interception and they they were not pick six but they were close to it mm -hmm. where it brought them you know to really close range of getting um, a touchdown I think if you really take away one of those um, interceptions we win that game mm -hmm. uh, I think we had them kind of figured out they um, you know they, they did score those first two possessions but after that you know it was you know they had a tough time I mean they, they couldn't run the ball we pretty much stopped them running the ball um, their passing game wasn't really that hot either but those turnovers and you know when you have those things you, you really can't win games and you know, there's a play that I made that I didn't really make that I wish I could have back, and that was the one with Emmitt Smith um, right. got in for the last touchdown. Um, I, you know, it looked like I overran it, but I, I really didn't overrun it. I was, I was thinking that the other inside backer was going to feel uh, that boy. I was trying to just maybe keep him from going outside of me, mm -hmm. and um, that's one play I wish I was like, hey, just make a tackle. Sometimes. You know, in football, we we want to do our assignment and do our jobs, and that's good. But when you have an opening, our opportunities to make a play, make the play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, uh, it was something to watch that that Super Bowl 30, uh, LeVon had a heck of a game. And he sure did. It was a great game. And, uh, you know, the, the teammates in Pittsburgh, LeVon, we've had many on the show. Uh, my goodness, Tony, Tim Worley, Leon mm -hmm. Searcy. Uh, I could go on and on. Randy Fuller, in fact, I talked to him last night. Levon, he sends his regards. Uh, there's just so many good mm -hmm. players and good guys that were on that team. Another guy that comes to my mind who fascinated me was, you had mentioned Rod Woodson. And before he got hurt, one of the fastest players I've seen on the football field and one of the most exciting, Levon. Tell me what he was like as a teammate. Oh, man, he was on another level. Right. Um, before he got hurt, I mean, it, 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 it kind of gave you more of a security blanket that you knew Rob was going to make a play or three right. <laughs> that was going to turn the game around. And, I mean, he had it all. I mean, come my size, I mean, smarts, I mean, speed, toughness, everything he wanted from a cornerback. I mean, he wasn't afraid to come up and hit. I mean, that's we kind of got our – but it's only working. I mean, he would come off the edge and make sides. I mean, he would just make incredible plays. So, as a defense, knowing that he's back there in the corner, it just gives you more security. And it gives you, as a defensive coordinator, a little bit more freedom to do more and you can become creative. And, um, you know, this is the one thing about schemes or whatever 
they only work if the players are good <laughs> yeah. and the players buy into it. If they don't buy into it, no matter what you draw up and no matter how it seems like it works, it doesn't work unless the players cooperate, mm-hmm. unless they kind of see it and say, okay, well, we're going to go with this. We're going to trust it. And um, Rod just push you to be better yourself. You know, there's players that are like that, that they, they're, they're, way of playing helps you play better. You understand this is what it takes. You see them working. Rob is probably the hardest work I've ever seen. And they just, I mean, he made you step your game up. Because if you didn't, then you couldn't play on that defense. That was just basically it. And, um, you know, you, I was fortunate to have players like that. They kind of show you the way. They kind of show you how it was. And, um, you know, you try to pass that experience on, but um, he was a tremendous player, probably one of a kind. Of course, he's a Hall of Famer, so that's, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that's wonderful, but um, I, I really enjoy playing with Robles. A couple more minutes left with LeVon Kirkland. Tony? And hey, LeVon, you've worked as a counselor at Clemson, and you've worked as a coach, and you've worked with young people, and um what are you seeing generationally? Are you seeing similarities or are you seeing differences? And uh, are you having some of these conversations like, hey, kids, this is what the real world's like? <laughs> uh, you, know, I, you know, I tell a lot of people that, you know, especially with this organization that, you know, the, the guys that play the NFL are some of the best men in the world. I mean, they're sort of the you know, best kids. I mean, mm-hmm. they work hard. They uh, they study. They care. Uh, they're good citizens. It's like if you're an English teacher and you're and you're teaching the AP class, <laughs> and mm-hmm. you know those are the kids who want to learn, who want to get better. Mm-hmm. That's the same here on this level. Uh, you know, they want to get better, and if they know that um, you can teach that to them, they're all ears. So um, I'm fortunate in a way. I think the challenges are always maybe college kids or high school kids, and really they're not fully developed. And can you help them develop? Can you help them um, see beyond where they're at now and to trust in the process too? You know, everybody wants instant success, but it's a process that you have to go through. And trying to really teach them that and how that's going to help them, um, not only in football, but throughout life. You know, teaching the process that the obstacles, that the struggles are going to actually make you better. And sometimes you have to go through those things to get to the next level. So I think, um, I think it's a thing you want to do. I, I don't think kids don't want to do that. I think that um, it's up to us who are you know, in these positions to help them maximize their um, talent. You know, I think a lot of times people always say, well, you know, kids today, but mm-hmm. you know, if we go back on our childhood and what we did, you know, we weren't r- really much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like we're the, you know, that we're always ideal. I think we kind of think that we were always ideal. Or we say, you know, something like the music today. But I think we have to meet people where they are and understand where they're coming from and and create relationships and get to know them. I think if you do that, then you're going to get some breakthroughs. But if you're in the mindset that, oh, we used to do it like this, and we used to do it like that, and it was so much better, but, you know, you know, I would trade Facebook and technology or, you know, driving a car for a horse and buggy and, <laughs> you know, no air conditioning. I mean, you always, you know, the future always seems, um, we always advance. And, you have to kind of be able to advance and you have to be able to adapt to the environment that's going on. And also, honestly, you have to be understanding too. You have to understand that things are different. Kids are different. They have, you know, different pressures. They have different things going on. And I think it's always interesting when you get to understand somebody, you know what they're at, they're at that you can, then you can really teach and you can really um, help that young person out. So, uh, you know, it's a, you got to have a growth mindset, you know, you can't be fixed in when you're coaching football or anything. You have to be able to be able to say it's okay to change my mind and be able 
open to new suggestions or new ways of doing things. And, you know, I'm kind of glad that I'm involved with um, with this organization and being able to stay involved with football keeps you young. And so, you know, as a man, it just keeps you young because you're kind of hanging with um, younger people, and it's kind of cool. And um, especially if they accept you, it's really cool. And Levon, uh, I know the last two years of your career, you always told Chris and I that you will always be a Steeler at heart. You ended with years, single years in Seattle and Philly. Must have been strange going to a training camp without a Bill Cowher coach team. Uh, any regrets about doing that? You played incredibly well right to the end, never missing a game, which uh, blows my mind. But uh, how were those last two years? Uh, any regrets at all, Levon? Oh no, I, you know I think um, that the change was really good. You know, right. uh, I, I think my heart will always be with a Stiller, of course. Sure. Uh, but I think being able to go to another team and learn other schemes and learn how other people do things, you realize that there are different ways of getting things done. They don't have to be a certain way. You know, you can do things differently and. Uh, I'm just fortunate. And then you get to meet other players and other coaches. And now I see that, you know, being on this level again, you know, there are, you know, Ron Rivera coached me at Philly or, mm -hmm. or, you know, different coaches at Seattle coached me at the end. So you, you, uh, you, you get to meet more people. And, and that's, a, that's a cool thing. It, it really is. I, I think it mm -hmm. seems kind of cool to be with one team. I know it seems really cool, but. Um, I don't regret my uh, decision to go to Seattle and then to Philly because I got to know different people, different schemes, and different players. So, um, you know, it's always good to expand your horizons. But, um, you know, those Pittsburgh years were definitely special. And uh, being able to play there for nine years and be a mainstay and be consistent, um, you know, it's, good. it's just a good testimony to have. So, um you know, I, I do consider myself a stealer, but I don't regret being in Seattle and being in Philly. Well, LeVon, our time is just about up. Um, we've just scratched the surface, and maybe we can have you on again down the road to talk more about the experience with the Cardinals, et cetera. There's a ton of questions we didn't even get to tonight, but uh, between the show here and the television side and Thursday night tailgate, Chris and I, I know we'll be talking to you uh, in the very near future. Uh, we want to wish you, first of all, happy holidays to you and yours, LeVon, and uh, we will hopefully talk again soon, and uh, we can't thank you enough for coming on tonight. Thanks so much, LeVon. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you, guys, for having me. Anytime you need me, let me know. We'll do that, and uh, we'll talk soon, LeVon. Be well, sir. Good night, sir. All right, you guys do the same, okay? Take care now.